Hey everyone, welcome to All Techies. I am Pankaj Rai and in this video we will dive deeper into Jetpack Compose. In my previous tutorials, I have mentioned about how you could use Firebase services like Cloud File Store, Cloud Storage and even MVVM architecture with Jetpack Compose. In this video, we will focus more on the individual components of Jetpack Compose. So let's start with Composable. What is Composable? You can mark any function. See, I'm saying show demo is a function, and I have annotated this function with at the rate composable. Now, what it means is that it gives an indication to the compiler because with Jetpack Compose, we are going to use a custom Kotlin compiler, which is dedicatedly meant for Jetpack Compose. So, at the rate composable is like a keyword which is understood by the compiler, and it makes understanding that this function is having that piece of code which has to be drawn on screen. So you could say that this function is having some state and you're transforming that state to UI. Now, even though it is having at the rate, it's not something which is dependent on annotation processor. It's just like a keyword which is meant only for the Kotlin compiler. But how do you differentiate between composable and the ordinary function? Because Composable is really good if you want to draw certain things on UI, but this is not always the case. You might be having normal functions also where you might be doing some sort of calculations. So that you could do using naming convention. Say I'm having a function called as calculation, and this is not a composable because say I want to do some sort of calculation here. So the way we differentiate this is with a naming convention. Composable starts with capital case, and normal ordinary function starts with small case. So it follows the camel case. And here it just start with capital. So by this way you make an understanding like this function is composable and this is an ordinary function. So this was about composable. How do these things are stored? Say I have a composable and inside this composable I have another composable called as button. Now how do this is going to be stored? I'm having a text like click here. And if you want to see the code, just click on it and you can see that it is again a composable. So one thing to remember here is that you cannot call composable function from an ordinary function. So I have this text and if I remove composable or even this button, now if I remove this composable, I'm not permitted to call button and text from this function anymore. Now it is allowing me to call text only because button is composable. So one thing to remember is composable can only be called from another composables, not from any other ordinary functions. Now let's talk about the data structure. The data structure used here is nothing but a gap buffer. So how does it work? So it starts from the beginning, line by line, it stores everything in the gap buffer. So that when you want to change anything, say I'm clicking on a button, on, on a click of a button, I want to change the text also. Say I could have number, which is initially zero, and on click of a button, I want to increase this number. And then I want to update the text also based on the number of clicks. So what this is going to do is that this will recompose itself. And by the recomposition, it will update the text on screen. And for this, it uses gap buffer. It understands what piece of code has to recompose. And by this way, it gives an optimization that it will not recompose entire composables. It understands what has to get recomposed take the pointer to that place and only recompose that part. But how do it works? How do it understand that this part, this block is something which has to get recomposed? For that itself, we have something called as mutable state of. Say for example, here I have this as normal var. Now this doesn't have a capability to recompose this function because we do not have any observer or a state associated with this. To make this uh, aware for the state changes, what do I need to do is like 
I could say something like remember this mutable state of and the default value mutable state of now what do this mean is like with this object set an observer whoever is observing this object that will participate in recomposition remaining else it will just come and ignore it will not do anything once again on screen say for example now i have this num i want to change the value for this now i'm reading this value here at this place so whenever i click this button this will get recomposed once again that means the value for this will change however there is no observer associated outside this composable num dot value wherever you are using this value you are setting an observer but this observer is only limited this to this composable not to this so that means that even if say i have an object here it will not redefine itself once again so no really initialization however if i want to recompose this function also what should i do is like i could say something like num dot value and by this way because i am observing here which is inside this composable so whatever i have defined here those things may also get reinitialized and this is something which we may not want always and that's why we use remember i'll show you this difference say that i have a class called as user and this have information like let me have a constructor parameter itself like where number now if i create an object of this class then so what i'm going to do is like i'm going to print the address for this object so by this way it will give me the address now every time when i click on a button this will get recomposed leaving behind this part so values will not change for this but it will change only for this composable and i'll show you this let me run this function and before that let me call this here show demo and i'll show you how you can recompose this entire function also where whatever you're defining it outside this composable they will also get reinitialized for that i just need to call num dot value outside this composables okay now let's see the value that we have initially the value is zero and here you could see this the value is zero and the address is 97ef3fi now when i click on the button you could see the value click here one now this is getting changed but address remains same that's not changing why is that because this text is getting recomposed as it is observing the value but now if i want to recompose this entire function what should i do is that i should have an observer associated for this composable so i'm not reading any value i'm just giving this num dot value and not doing anything i'm not printing it anywhere not logging it just giving this content here because now this observer is associated with this composable so you'll see that the value the address value for this user will change as it will try to reinitialize this let me run this again and we can avoid this in the next step, i'll show you how we can avoid reinitialization of the objects okay so here it is now let me do one thing let me click on a button once again and this time you'll see the address for this object will also change here it is now this is all happening because of this num dot value 
as I wrote it here, so it has set an observer associated with this composable, and this is taking part in the recomposition, which means that this is getting reinitialized. Not this, only this. But why not this? And that's all because of remember block. Let me do one thing. Let me put this in remember block and let me initialize this with the same way as I have done before. I'm just adding remember block. Now let's see what happens. Because I have added remember block, because of this, now you'll see the address will not change. Even though this is getting recomposed, it will not reinitialize the object. And there's something called as positional memoization. Okay, now let's see this one. So I have number as 0 and address is DE0B58A. Now when I'm clicking on a button, you could see that the number is changing, but address remains same. This is all because of this remember block. And as I said, this is called as positional memoization. Positional memoization means like for the given input, it cached the output. And if which makes sense, because if it's a function and you are giving same parameter value, then the result that you are going to get, that will always be same. That will not change. And the same concept is followed right here with remember. If the input parameter is same, then just ignore computing this lambda once again. However, we haven't specified any input here. So when we do not specify any input here, which means that it's like nothing, it just execute for one time and from next time onwards, this is getting recomposed. Do not reinitialize this object once again. That's an objective of remember. Now let's see how we can change the value, how we can reinitialize this. Now let me do one thing. Let me give a parameter. And this time, let me give parameter as num dot value. Now, this is something called as input parameter. As the input parameter changes, this will get executed. So, because after every button click, this value is getting changed. So now you'll see that when I run this, you'll see a different address for the user. It's all because this is changing. So that's a tip for remember the positional memoization. If you do not want certain things to get reinitialized over and over, but at the same time you do not want to even pass the default value, use like this, remember with no parameter. But if you want to make it align with certain input value, then do provide certain input values. Like here you could see the value is zero, address is DE05, and then now when I click on it, you can see the value and address both are getting changed. Okay, now another concept here is that, as I said, this dot value sets an observer, which means that because of this, this method is getting recomposed. So what if instead of here, I give the value at this place? Will it still give me the same user object? And for this to get reinitialized, let me add it here also, num.value. So now when I run, it's not going to give me different object once again, even though I'm observing the value, I'm using the value here. Again, it's because of the same concept. Remember, we executes the inner part only and only when the input parameter changes. And here, because input parameter is not defined, which means that once this function is getting executed, so for the first time, it will initialize and give the value. From the next time onwards, it's not going to change the value. And you could see it here. Now let me show you the value, what value it is having. And let me click on the button once again, and you could see here, the value user.num is always remaining as zero. So that was a video about how 
you could use composables what is composable what is recomposition and how gap buffer is used here also when to use remember and what happens when you use remember so that's it for this video and stay tuned for the upcoming videos where i'll mention about how you could use even animations with jetpack compose so stay tuned and if you haven't subscribed this channel then do hit the subscribe button do like the video and share it with your friends thank you and stay tuned